Hey, it's Mike here, and today I could be doing a dramatic response video and getting way more views, but instead we're gonna nerd out by looking at the topic of tryptophan and the gut and how, depending on what you eat, you can reach a fork in the road where you go A or B, where A is a negative effect for your health and B is a various positive effects. Option A, we're talking making a toxin that is a kidney disease promoter and can encourage colon infection and other issues. And then we have option B, where we're talking about positive stuff, compounds that are associated with less atherosclerosis, less type two diabetes, better gut wall function, and in some cases may even be protective against dietary allergies. What? And also can trigger the same mechanism as Ozempic. Yeah, GLP-1, you know it. So let's investigate this because there's a lot more to tryptophan than just potentially making you sleepy after a heavy meal. Let's go. And yeah, tryptophan is an essential amino acid and it's for whatever reason culturally associated with turkey and Thanksgiving meals and getting a food coma and really tired. But I feel like that's been well debunked. You can straight up take protein powders with way more tryptophan than turkey has and not feel that way. I've done a whole video on food comas. It's probably more likely like fat in your blood and other things like that. So yeah, soy protein, for example, has higher tryptophan content than turkey. Heck, even tahini, that sesame seed butter has higher tryptophan content than turkey by weight. But this is where the human body has been blowing my mind for a bit with these major forks in the road. I recently talked about what can happen with dietary nitrates from meat or plants, where if you have the meat versions, they can turn into carcinogenic nitrosamines, but with plant nitrates and the antioxidants and other phytochemicals, you end up with nitric oxide, which dilates the arteries, lowers heart disease risk. So you can put the same exact thing in your mouth, in that case, nitrates, and end up with a completely different result so let's get to the fork in the road with tryptophan. As you eat tryptophan, the vast majority, one half to three quarters of it is broken down into what's called indole, which is just kind of a weird word, indole. Bob Dole, Dole Whip, I don't know. But yeah, this is tryptophan and this is indole. It's as if you just sort of chop the head off of tryptophan, that's what you get. Then depending on what bacteria and what other foods you're eating, indole can be turned into various different compounds, positive and negative. But indole itself in high levels can have negative effects. High levels itself are seen in people with chronic kidney disease. And as this article mentions, high gut indole levels also increase the risk of persistent C. difficile infection of the colon. And these scientists, while well, it is a preprint claim that indole is required for a mouse rheumatoid arthritis model to you know, give mice arthritis, which is pretty evil in my mind. Oh, it's various inflammatory cytokines, et cetera, that are created from having indole there. And while this is quite a huge stress, it does remind me of this study where high red meat was associated with two to three times the risk of rheumatoid arthritis. And this makes sense when we look at the dietary stuff we're about to get into. We're talking a high tryptophan intake from that meat, but then also a low intake of the dietary things that you want. What is the secret dietary thing? It's really complicated. It is Oreos. No, I'm joking. It's fiber. I know it sounds simple, but it's very interesting how it all works together. And we'll cover all those mechanisms in a second, but there's another negative indole derivative that is probably the main one of concern here. We're talking about indoxyl sulfate, which performs nephrotoxicity or kidney toxicity and cardiovascular toxicity is made when you don't have that fiber there. As this paper mentions, indoxyl sulfate is elevated in disturbed gut microbiota and is decreased by probiotics. And this one blew my mind, indoxyl sulfate is associated with more psychic anxiety? Yeah, I'd also probably have anxiety if I was psychic. <laughs> No, that's not what they're talking about here. It's a study on 200 people, just, you know, psychological anxiety. They say that it is associated with altered neural processing and with psychiatric symptoms like anxiety in humans, which provides further evidence that the gut microbiome disruption can contribute to neuropsychiatric disorders. All right, now let's get to that main study at hand, a recent one from Nature's Microbiology Journal. They went ahead and created a mock digestive system and they either gave it fiber or not and saw what happened to that tryptophan. And they say that with the addition of pectin or other mixed fibers, indole, the potentially harmful ones, production was significantly reduced, but high levels of indole were detected in fecal cultures with the absence of fiber. They also found something really interesting about E. coli, which as you know, can be a pathogen in our gut. And it was a case again, where you have a switch. If you don't have fiber, E. coli wants to eat that tryptophan and it can be creating indole, et cetera. But then if you have fiber there, 
other bacteria eat that fiber up and they create carbohydrates that E. coli would rather eat. And then we can see a 16 to 64 times increase in those carb digesting genes and their expression, which is cool. So it's kind of like E. coli is your dog and it's chewing the couch. And in this situation with fiber, it's like you're giving that dog a chew toy and it's not doing damage. All right, now let's get into those good indole derivatives. You can see from this chart, we have the nice positive health effects on the left and the negative effects on the right. So you can really see this is wide sweeping. And as this study mentions, good indoles maintain the biological barrier of the human intestine through processes affect the immune system's function and activate receptors that are implicated in better intestinal health, talking bowel disease, colitis, colorectal cancer, and further promote human health through diabetes, inflammation, and vascular regulation. And this brings me to today's sponsor, Seeds DS01 Daily Symbiotic. I got my travel vial out because I'm about to head to Europe tomorrow. Anyway, it's a prebiotic and a probiotic, and it has 53.6 billion active bacterial cell units, and that is from 24 different strains, which are scientifically shown to support various areas of health. We're talking gut barrier, gut immunity, overall digestive health, heart health, skin health, and more. We're about to cover one of the good indole derivatives, ILA, and it is made from bifidobacteria. And in the literature, ILA was connected to gut motility. And we have trials showing that bifido strains that are in seed actually help increase the bowel frequency in people. In other words, they help fight constipation. And then we also have various lactobacillus species in there, which also create some beneficial indole derivatives. And Lindy and I have been taking seeds since 2021 and loving it, definitely bringing it to Europe with us. And so if you would like to try it, feel free to click the link below and use the code MIC25, M-I-C-25, for 25% off your first month's supply. Well, there are several potentially positive indole derivatives here from tryptophan. There are two that the study looked at. ILA and IPA. Everybody loves a good IPA. No, we're not talking about beer here. Let's hit ILA first, indole lactic acid. There's not quite as much data on it, but as this article states, ILA has protective effects against dietary allergies, which is pretty cool. It also has gut wall protection properties from this study, quote, clinical evidence suggests that the fecal ILA level is negatively correlated with the progression indicator of inflammatory bowel diseases. And this one's a bit of a stretch, but it's a Petri dish study on eczema in human skin cells. And they found that ILA helps the condition of that eczema, atopic dermatitis. This chart shows ILA is one of the derivatives that through a receptor on the lining of your gut helps regulate gut wall integrity, immune responses, and gastrointestinal motility or keeping your gut moving. All right, next we have that IPA, the king here, which is indole propionic acid. And at this point you might be thinking, propionic, propionate. The other one was lactic, like lactate. These, if you're a really big nerd, sound like short chain fatty acids, which as we know are super beneficial and derived from bacteria by fiber as well. And the process appears to be a bit more complicated than just taping the two together. Here's a chart of making IPA, not brewing yeast. But yeah, structurally, chemically, it is just an indole with a propionate right there, boom. Anyway, the effects are pretty amazing from this American Heart Association study. IPA protects against heart failure. Yeah, as this image from the study shows, the gut makes the IPA, then it regulates that CERT3 and NAD, which are all the rage in the anti-aging scene. So does this just reverse the age of your heart? I won't make that claim directly. And yes, back to this chart, IPA is one of those indole derivatives that increases GLP-1. Again, Ozempic and other drugs are GLP-1 agonists. They increase it, which suppresses your appetite. And this is a situation like in my Nature's Ozempic video, where it's just your natural GLP system at work, eating healthy whole foods and having an effect. And I talked about that neuropsychiatric effect with the negative indoles there, and we actually have positive ones in general from this paper. Yeah, they can be absorbed into circulation and participate in the process of immunity, metabolism, and neural communication of the microbiotic gut-brain axis. They cite evidence of them being antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, neuroprotective, and nerve regenerating, which affects the occurrence and prognosis of Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, and other neuropsychiatric diseases. And there are other particular dietary choices that could affect things negatively here as well. Well, we need more human data on this. It appears that cholesterol 
high cholesterol intake suppresses IPA production. And as this study mentions, compared with a low fat diet, the high fat diet fed mice, we're just looking at mice here, exhibited a significant depletion of these good indoles in their liver. And also finally that high salt intake also has an effect, reducing levels of that ILA and another one as well. So yeah, I really hope we have more human studies in the future. I think over the next five or so years, we absolutely will. But I have to say, I can't mention tryptophan without mentioning how it's a precursor to serotonin and the process that can happen there. And this chart shows the gut connection there and how microbes break down tryptophan into tryptamine, which increases serotonin, that 5-HT. And that is done by Clostridium and Ruminococcus. So you wanna make sure to have that good diversity of gut microbiome action. In the end, this is just another fascinating way that the exact same compound in food, whether it's plant-based or animal-based food, can just enter your body and go down two very different roads, whether we're talking about preventing disease or supporting disease. And while there are various dietary aspects that I would love to see more data on, whether we're talking about cholesterol hurting it, salt hurting it, a high-fat diet hurting it, it's very clear that fiber is the switch here in terms of whether we're talking about creating IPA and ILA, the beneficial ones, or not. It's essentially flipping E. coli from being a good or a bad bacteria in that sense, at least. But yeah, with IPA and ILA, whether we're talking about the gut connection, the cardiovascular connection, those food allergies, etc., you want to have this stuff. And so you want to eat fiber. Anyway, if you'd like to try seeds, anyway, if you'd like to try seeds DS01 daily symbiotic, you can of course click that link below and use the code Mike25 for 25% off your first month supply at checkout. All right, and let me know down below if you have ever even heard of indoles before, because I feel like 99% of people haven't. So thanks for staying here and nerding out with me. I had a lot of fun researching this. Always love to hear that. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.